Hi, it's Dr. Adam. Let's talk about how molecular orbitals are formed. We previously learnt about atomic orbitals and how they could be combined to form linear combinations of atomic orbitals, or molecular orbitals, which can be expressed using this equation, where Ca is the contribution of the atomic orbital to the molecular orbital. There are several rules that govern if a molecular orbital can be formed from a linear combination of atomic orbitals. The atomic orbitals should be close to each other. This is to ensure that there is good overlap of the orbitals. The energies of the orbitals should also be similar. If the energy difference is too large, the stabilization effect of the bond formation will be too small to allow bond formation. And finally, the orbitals should have the same symmetry to allow molecular orbitals to form when they overlap. Why are some interactions called sigma and some pi? Sigma interactions are symmetric towards rotation along the bonding axis. If there are two in-phase orbitals, they will overlap to form a sigma bonding molecular orbital. n in this equation is just a normalization factor. If the two s orbitals are out of phase, then the overlap will be destabilizing, giving a sigma star anti-bonding orbital. If these orbitals are then rotated around the z-axis, they will not change, confirming that they are sigma orbitals. Sigma bonds formed from p orbitals are formed in a similar manner. If there are two in-phase p orbitals, they will overlap to form a sigma bonding molecular orbital. If the two p orbitals are out of phase, then the overlap will be destabilizing, giving a sigma star anti-bonding orbital. Again, if these orbitals are rotated around the z-axis, they will not change, confirming that they are sigma orbitals. How about pi orbitals then? Pi molecular orbitals have a change of sign when rotated about the bonding axis. If there are two in-phase p orbitals perpendicular to the bonding axis, they will overlap to form a pi bonding molecular orbital. If these orbitals are then rotated around the z bonding axis, they will change sign confirming that they are pi orbitals as the yellow and blue regions interchange. If the two p orbitals are out of phase, they will overlap to form a pi star antibonding molecular orbital. If these orbitals are then rotated around the z-axis, they will change sign confirming that they are pi orbitals as the yellow and blue regions interchange. Whilst there are five d orbitals, only some of their combinations will result in molecular orbitals. The dz squared orbitals can combine to form sigma bonding and sigma star antibonding orbitals because they are symmetric to rotation along the bond axis. The dxz atomic orbitals can combine to form pi bonding and pi star antibonding molecular orbitals because they are anti-symmetric to rotation along the bond axis as they have a phase change where yellow becomes blue and vice versa. When atomic orbitals meet side to side, as they do when dx squared minus y squared and dxy atomic orbitals combine, they form delta bonding and delta antibonding molecular orbitals. Delta orbitals change sign on a C4 rotation around the bond axis. When molecular orbitals combine successfully, they produce a bonding and antibonding orbital. The bonding orbital is lower in energy than the atomic orbitals, and is stabilizing, whereas the antibonding orbital is higher in energy and destabilizing. Molecular orbitals can also form between atomic orbitals of different type if their energies and symmetries are similar. If the z-axis is kept as the bonding axis, an s orbital and the dz squared atomic orbitals can overlap to form a molecular orbital. Other combinations of atomic orbitals are less successful, such as between the s and the dxz atomic orbitals, as the s orbital approaches along the node in the d orbital. Molecular orbitals can also be labelled with a subscript g or u, meaning garada or ungarada. g or garada molecular orbitals are symmetric to inversion and ungarada are asymmetric to inversion. The bonding sigma molecular orbital formed from 1s atomic orbitals is garada, meaning that it doesn't change when inverted. The antibonding sigma star molecular orbital, also formed from 1s atomic orbitals, is ungarada, meaning that it does change on inversion. Let's check comprehension.